Welcome to the Wonder Learn Podcast. I'm your host, Francis Tapon. In this episode, I interview David Berger, who is the CEO of Valera. Do you ever miss having your voice assistant when you're traveling? When you go into a hotel room and say, hey, Google, Alexa, or Siri, and all of a sudden nobody answers, nobody cares? Well, all that's about to change, thanks to Valera. That's right. This is a technology that's going to be infiltrating a bunch of hotels in 2019 and beyond. And so you should definitely check out this episode to see the privacy issues that are brought up, as well as some of the cool, convenient features that it will bring to people who stay in hotels like you and me. So listen in this interesting episode with the CEO of Valera. Valera is not a household name, so let's start by 101. What is Valera do? What are the, what's what's their elevator pitch? Yeah, so Valera provides the conversation management software for hotels that allows uh, and enables popular consumer hardware like the Amazon Echo and Google Home uh, to serve guests in hotels. Uh, so if you're in a hotel and you see an Amazon Echo or a Google Home um, and you engage with it, our software is connecting your request uh, to the hotel and allowing for the hotel to manage that conversation with you um, in, a, in a scalable way. How does it do it? I'm just curious about the technology. Like, for example, I'm in my hotel room and I say, I need room service or I need housekeeping. What happens then? Yeah, absolutely. So your uh, the recording of your voice uh, goes up to Amazon's cloud or Google's cloud and is processed into code. That code uh, is then sent to Volara, and uh, Volara uh, takes an action on that code. So we're going to send a reply to you saying, absolutely, we'd love to get you room service. We're going to send a message into, um, into the work order management system of the hotel so that the room service personnel know, you know how to serve you and what you need. Got it. Um, so how do you address the voice assistant? So like, I know you have to say, okay, Siri, or hey, Google, or Alexa. I mean, there's so many different personalities out there. So do I have to say, okay, Valera? Nope. You'd you'd address the voice assistant just like you would at home. So with the name Alexa or Google Home or or hey, Google. Um, It's really the value of our technology is that it's just like what you have at home, only better. Um, Okay, but but, but um, it's in – hold on. I was once I was house sitting a few days ago with my wife Mm -hmm. and we were in a house of an Apple employee. And so, of course, he had Siri. He had Siri everywhere. But in our house, we either have Alexa or we have Google. So Siri was making noise, playing music or something like that. And then my wife kept yelling at it. "Okay, Google, turn off. Okay, Google, shut up. Okay, Google. And of course, Siri wasn't (laughs) listening. (laughs) So how do you yeah, deal with that problem? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, today they are uh, unique ecosystems. My, my personal hope is over time, these ecosystems combine and, and, and collaborate uh, so that whatever you address your voice assistant, all of them will be at your service. Uh, but today they are unique ecosystems from Apple, Google, um, uh, Amazon. You may not be aware, but, you know, in China, there's, you know, an Alibaba solution. There's a T, uh, a, a, um, a Baidu solution, there's a Tencent solution. So, you know, there are, there are various competitive solutions today. Um, my, my hope, we'll see if it happens, is that they all, um, you know, cooperate so that when you address your uh, device, whether you're at home or in a hotel, um, they will um, serve you uh, to the best of their collective ability. Okay, but for now, it's up to the, cons- to the hotel guest to sit there and say, okay, I'm at the four seasons and I look at that and I somehow know it's Siri and that's not because a lot of people, especially maybe the older generation might look at these, Mm -hmm. you know, little things that look like speakers and have no idea. I guess there must be a label next to it. Maybe says, this is Siri or call me Siri. Do you do that with your, with your, um, we, we do, we do provide some instructions for the guests and, uh, upon check-in the guest is informed. I mean, actually, it's been amazing. You know, we first started working in this space three years ago, 
three years ago, the Amazon Echo was about one year old. Um, and um, particularly when we, we would put the Amazon Echo dot in, in the room, people thought it was a paperweight or a hockey puck. Um, right. They really didn't know what it was. Now we're, you know, we're four years into this voice assistant revolution um, and, and, you know, guests are more comfortable. Um, you know, I, I believe now we're up to about, um, about maybe 60 million uh, Amazon Echo devices out there in the market. Um, and, you know, Google is fast catching up and, and Apple is also out there promoting their, their products. So, um, you know, guests are becoming more and more familiar. Um, but anytime you put a new technology in a hotel room, guest education is important. Um, so we find um, uh, easy, simple, um, fun ways to educate the guests. Uh, so when you first walk into to the room, you're going to be welcomed by the device. Um, and uh, the device is you know, typically going to speak in the voice of the general manager of the hotel. And the wow. general manager's voice is going to tell you about you know, the solution and how you can use it um, to, to make your stay more comfortable. But I imagine the general manager's voice, oh, maybe it's a pre-recorded kind of can thing that it always says when they first enter the room. Is that correct? That, that's right. So, right. so we have two different uh, types of interactions. Um, uh, we have live and we have recorded. Um, so you can connect to a live person um, hands-free just by asking, um, you know, just by saying something like, you know, Alexa, call the general manager or call the front desk. Um, we can we can connect the person the guest live, um, but um, most guests actually don't want to speak to a live person. They want instant results. Um, you know, today we have this on-demand economy. People want what they want when they want it, um, and um, you know we have pre-recorded responses to the most popular questions uh, that a guest may may ask. You know, what's the Wi-Fi code? They don't really need to speak to a person to get that answer. Um, what time is breakfast? Um, you know, can I get towels brought to my room? Those kinds of things, you know, they're just utility, um, and uh, you know, the 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 guest wants an immediate response. They don't want to wait on hold. Um, and by by handling it in this way, we're also freeing up the staff to handle the higher value, uh, more complex requests that um, hotel hotel guests make. And is there a way for the hotel in the back end to insert their pre-recorded answers so that, for example, when they say, hey, what's the Wi-Fi code, they type that in and that Alexa or whoever knows that? Yeah, that's it exactly, yeah. So Volaris conversation management software has a content management system. So the hotel can either type in, they can record with a, with a human voice, like the general manager's voice, um, or we can pull on a content management system that, you know, they may have, uh, you know, for other types of content that they um, are are um, providing to guests. Um, so so um, there are different ways to do it, but but it's always curated by the hotel. Okay, so it's kind of like Alexa skill, for example, that you're providing a skill for Alexa, for example. Kind of kind of like that, except you know it's it's a little bit broader um, because it's really flexible and it's fully integrated. Um, so in real time, say say a hotel is hosting a wedding. And the bride and groom arrive uh, for the wedding uh, before their guests. They, the bride and groom can simply record a welcome greeting to their guests. We upload that. We set it for those particular guest rooms. And boom, every time a guest of that wedding walks into their room, they're going to receive a, a welcome from the bride and groom. Um, so it's super flexible um, and, and can be updated in real time. The second sort of uh, you know, significant benefit is that it's fully integrated into the existing technologies of the hotel. So if I ask for towels, that's not gonna just go off into the ether. That's gonna open up a ticket in the work order management system of the hotel. That request is routed directly to the, you know, to the, um, the, the handheld device of the housekeeper on my floor. And I get a knock on the door within seconds of that request from a housekeeper providing towels. Um, so the, the speed of service uh, is significantly improved uh, because of those integrations. I imagine this has to do a lot with the APIs of both the hotel management software on the hotel's end, as well as the APIs of Google or Alexa or Siri. Yeah, so so Volar actually sits in the middle of that, right? So um, we're controlling the conversations uh, by calling APIs provided by Google and Apple and, and uh, Amazon and others. And then um, on the on the back end, 
we are calling the APIs of the hotel, um, uh, existing hotel technology. Today we have about 27 hotel technology integrations, ranging from IPTV systems, room control systems, work order management systems, property management systems, uh, and even you know the valet. Uh, so um, you know all of which essentially put the um, the services and the technologies and the staff of the hotel uh, at at the tip of the guest home. Okay. Now, David, now, number one thing that are probably a lot of people are thinking when they're listening to this is like, oh my God, what if I'm having sex with my, uh, with a woman I'm having an affair with? <laughs> sure. And, and then all of a sudden, I, this, these little Alexa devices are picking up every little thing. So I imagine that maybe many guests come there and they try to unplug the thing actually from the wall. Yeah. So, so guest privacy is really central uh, to everything we do. Uh, so a few things I, I'd like to you know, highlight. Number one is the devices are only listening for whatever that wake word is, whether it's Alexa, Hey Google, uh, Siri. Um, the devices are, are recording over themselves every few seconds as they listen for that wake word. Then say, uh, you know, once that wake word is, is spoken, the recording is sent to the major platform, Amazon, Apple, Google, uh, to be um to be processed and turned into code that's sent back to us. But what's really critical to understand is that that recording is not connected to a guest profile in any way. Uh, Volaris software sits in between the, any information about the guest and the recording and creates a wall uh, so that the two are never connected. So we'll know what room number uh, is, this is coming from, but we won't know the guest name or any information about the guest. That's actually an additional level of um, of privacy protection that you don't have at home. When you set up one of these devices at home, you're putting in your address, your phone number, your name, right? So that Amazon can deliver you packages or whatever it might be. In the hotel, these are all on a hotel account. They're not connected to your personal account at all. Um, and, uh, and the major platforms that are processing your recording um, never have access to any of your personally identifiable information. Okay, but let's say you are doing something criminal, like the famous case might be, I think about 10 years ago or so, O.J. Simpson went into a hotel, I think it was in Las Vegas, and he basically effectively kidnapped somebody, legally kidnapped him, and then, you know, brandished weapons. There was a whole story, you probably know about it. And I'm wondering if the U.S. government or somebody could subpoena the recordings or anything that was said in that hotel room while OJ and his posse were trying to recover OJ's um, memorabilia. memorabilia. Mm -hmm. And that was a whole criminal case. It sent OJ to jail, but their case could have been made much more stronger, supposedly, uh, or maybe their defense could have been better um, mm -hmm. if they had the evidence of the voice is being said during that whole event. You follow what I'm saying. So is my question is, is, is there a legal way for the government to say, okay, we, wa we know that we've disconnected the room and the name of the person in the room and the identity of the person, but can we match them under some sort of criminal case and pull those two together? Yeah, so first thing I would say is, I highly recommend that your listeners don't be committing crimes in hotel rooms <laughs> uh, for many reasons. Uh, very, you know, this is, this is not the primary reason not to commit a crime in a hotel room. Um, but, um, you know, the, the government can certainly issue a subpoena uh, for information. Um, and I can't really speak to um, how any of these major platforms will respond to the, those types of requests, but up to, to them and their lawyers. I do know that in order to, um, connect a uh, guest profile and their personally identifiable information to um, uh, to a recording. The, they would, it would require data provided by the hotel, by the Lara, and by the natural language processing platform. Um, so uh, this is not something that you know could just be flippantly put together. Uh, it would require all three parties uh, to be involved um, and uh, you know, and, and likely a subpoena from, from the government. Right. Okay. So that, so the point is, is that technologically it's possible to do this, but it's a real pain in the butt and you will require coordination from three different companies, all of three 
who are probably not really too enthusiastic of doing it and would only do it if their arm is being twisted for some sort of criminal case. I, I would I would say that's that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, now tell me about where the adoption rate of Valera is. Like, w if somebody says this sounds so cool, I want to go experience this at a hotel. Are you mostly overseas or in the United States? I imagine it's mostly yeah. a lux a mo mostly a luxury market at this point. Yeah. So it, it's actually been amazing that the adoption has been uh, across. Um, various segments of the hotel um, market. Um, so today we're uh, working with about 100 hotel groups, uh, predominantly in the US, um, although we, we just launched our first property in Mexico and we're about to launch uh, our first luxury product in the Dominican Republic uh, and one in Europe as well. Um, <clears throat> but um, you know, you'll find us uh, really across the country. Um, we have a significant number of Marriott properties uh, deployed today. Uh, Viceroy, um, uh, uh, Kimpton, um, we um, we uh, have have the Malia brand as well. Um, so you'll see us um, in um, luxury properties as well as I, I failed to mention the uh, Best Western properties as well. Oh, um, so you'll well. find us in in um, some some lodging only um, properties where um, the hotels want to serve their guests more efficiently. Um, and uh, and this technology allows them to do that. Got it. So yeah, Best Western isn't really the luxury brand. It's pretty much so. If you've already penetrated them, that's a good sign. Yeah, I'd recommend your your listeners uh, if they're heading to uh, to Chicago, check out the Best Western Hawthorne Terrace. Uh, beautiful Best Western property, uh, not far from Wrigley Field, and uh, you know uh, it's uh, fully voice enabled. So where are you going with this, David? Uh, what uh, should we expect to see, let's say, in 2020? So I think by 2020, um, the hardware itself um, starts to fade into the background. And guests can simply speak, whether in their guest room or somewhere else in a hotel, and get what they want when they want it. Um, really, you know, what we see is the true definition of luxury is being able to engage with the hotel in a seamless, frictionless way without even really knowing that it's technology um, that is, is uh, enabling uh, your request to be served. And that's, that's pretty exciting. So basically the idea is that I'm like, God, I'm, I'm kind of hungry right now. Hey, can I get some chicken? And then all of a sudden Alexa and would do whatever. I don't, have to, I don't have to say, hey, Alexa, or hey, Siri, I just say, you know, speak to God, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I, send, you know, send out a prayer. I think, I think you're on the right track. I think you're on the right track. I mean, you know, the, the idea is, is that, um, you know, today hotels are, have struggled to provide a higher level of technology and service than guests have in their own homes, right? People in their homes now have, you know, on everything on demand from their mobile device. But hotels are uniquely positioned to provide something more because they have staff on site ready to serve you. Now, the challenge has always been, well, how do we connect the guests to that staff and how do we um, you know, ensure that the level of service is really what the guest expects? Um, this technology is enabling that and it's, it's uh, uh, only getting better. What do you use, David, at your house for your voice assistant? Yeah, so I, I've uh, I've got them all uh, to be honest, and okay. you know it's it's funny. I, I gave a talk just recently at Focusrite um, where uh, I I noted that my kids, I have a four year old and a two year old, are both using um, multiple voice assistants. Um, they, you know, I, I like to say that the true promise um, of uh, voice assistants in travel uh, is to provide um, contextually relevant, totally awesome conversational experiences um, for you or me. That might be you know, getting that fried chicken um, in my in my hotel room instantaneously. Um, for my kids today, it's uh, you know asking um, uh, you know asking Alexa to play Baby Shark or um, you know what did the fox say, and they laugh and and play. Um, you know, they're two and four. They're already having these um, voice based experiences, um, and you know they're going to expect them as they as they consume travel. Yeah, I imagine this your generation of these children at four years old, they're going to have 
a view that's totally different, just like millennials grew up with the internet and they didn't imagine a world before the internet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and if you think about it, my, my kids aren't, you know, they're not tapping on the on the iPad yet. They're not uh, typing on a computer. They don't, you know, they, they're, they're just learning to spell, um, but they can already uh, engage with these computers um, just by speaking. So, wow. you know, they're getting multiple extra years of computing power um, that, you know, kids up till now haven't had an opportunity to engage with. So somebody who's uh, listening in on our conversation right now, and they have not bought a smart speaker yet, what would you recommend of the three big ones? Yeah. So, you know, I think they're, they're all providing a really, um, a really amazing uh, solution today. Um, I mean, if you think about it, four years ago, talking to a computer was, you know, something that, you know, you have to have special software, you have to set it up, it didn't work right. Um, now, you know, all these major platforms, are providing natural language processing that works with an extremely high level of accuracy. Um, now, you know, everyone uh, will have their own um, opinions and, and preconceived notions about the different ecosystems. Um, but I honestly, you know, can say at least here in the United States, you can't go wrong with um, Apple, Google, or Amazon. Okay, but there's, I know each one of them has probably their strengths and weaknesses. Um, I'm familiar mm -hmm. a little bit with Alexa. I'm a familiar, I, the only one I don't really know too well. I know it a little bit because I, like I said, I sometimes stay at this house that has Siri. Um, but so I kind of know all three, but I'm just trying to see like, perhaps is there one that you think is good for this type of person? And if you're this type of person, you'd rather have this. I mean, obviously if you're an Apple person, sure. it's a no brainer. You got to go with Siri. But I guess if you're agnostic, or yeah. um, or if you're you're part of the Android world, non Apple world, then you have two choices or three choices really. I mean, even if you're agnostic, you can still pick Siri. Sure. Yeah. So so I I do think that um, as these um, platforms mature and grow, you will see actually more differentiation. They will um, become. Um, not not in the actual natural language processing. I actually think that's going to become more commoditized, but in their distinct expertise and personalities. Um, so you know, so music is something that you know Apple does really well. Um, shopping is something that Amazon does really well. Uh, search is something that Google does really well, and you'll start to see those core competencies. I think come out even more strongly in these major platforms. Okay. I, I, that's a fair assumption. Now, what percentage, like if you broke out the pie uh, between those three platforms in the United States, yeah. who the, the hotel, it's not you who makes the decision, or maybe they ask for your recommendation, which one should we use? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure that happens too. So let's say I'm the Four Seasons Hotel and I say, okay, David, uh, you guys know everything about this stuff. Which one should I use? Mm -hmm. What's your answer? When they when they yeah, ask for so, your recommendation for the hotel, yeah. So uh, I I do like to defer to the hotel um, because I do think there's um, value in all of them. And for what the hotel wants uh, to achieve the hotel's business objectives, they're all actually the same. They're all going to process natural language. They're all going to um, integrate with Volaris software, which will integrate with the existing hotel technologies, and they'll you know they'll all serve the guests. Um, really, the differentiator is what are your guests more, most comfortable with? Um, and to some degree, that depends on the area of the country or the world that you're in. Um, so, you know, you, you can have the best technology in the world, but if your guests um, aren't comfortable using it and don't use it, um, it's not providing a lot of value. So I like to, you know, turn the question back on the hotel and say, well, you know, what, what are your guests most comfortable with? Um, you know, are you in an area that... Um, that is uh, attracting lots of business travelers who um, maybe are more familiar with Google? Are you, um, you know, in an area with lots of people who want to be connected to um, their Amazon ecosystem, be able to shop and have, have, um, have more uh, leisure time uh, with their devices? Um, you know, then I'd, I'd recommend Amazon. But really, it's up to the hotel. I, I think the, the platforms are close enough now and they all work uh, just as well at achieving the hotel business objectives um, that, you know, we're, we're truly agnostic. 
Okay, so for example, Google has Google Express and Amazon has Amazon Prime now. Uh, if I'm sitting far away from home and I say use Amazon Prime now or Google Express and I want to have, let's say, something delivered to my hotel room, can I say, hey, Google, can you go ahead and buy me some whatever, uh, a, a computer mouse, for example? So, so that's not available yet today. Uh, remember, I, I mentioned earlier that it's not going to be connected to your personal account. Oh, right. Um, which means that to, today, um, any uh, anything that requires payment or personal authentication is going to be disabled. Now, that's coming soon, though, uh, as we figure out and, and work through those privacy issues. Um, and uh, you know, and then, yes, you'll be able to do that on, on all of the major platforms. You could do maybe like a, a guest waiver for somebody who, at the beginning and just say, hey, are you willing to identify yourself? That's one one potential solution because some people don't give a shit. Yes. Um, you know, I think a waiver is more of just a, a, um, a prophylactic solution that we, we put in place uh, regardless. Um, we still in the hotel still, uh, whether someone you know, signs a waiver or not, um, want to ensure that we're pr protecting their personal information. Um, so that means that we have to have ways, for example, to wipe the devices at checkout. You certainly don't want, you know, to uh, to um, you know order something and then have someone else, um, you know, come into the hotel room the next day and order something on your account. Um, so those those things are, you know, some are developed, some are being developed. Um, but uh, you know, until we have um, uh, rock solid privacy protections, um, we're not on on, on that. On the, on the um, ordering piece, uh, we're not going to open up payment and uh, and personal authentication, um, but it is coming soon. It's we're pretty close. Do you know, David, what who's got the market share of those three things in not not just in Valera? Valera, I'll ask that as a separate question. The market share mm -hmm. in Valera, but what about? Let's start with the United States. Who's winning mm -hmm. the smart speaker war? today yeah so so i don't know the exact numbers um i do know that you know amazon got a healthy lead uh, it was out in front early um and that you know google has made some some great strides catching up uh, and i think apple is is making some efforts as well um, but having a little bit less traction um so you know so today certainly there's in the united states more um and i wish i had the, the exact numbers for you but more um, are using uh, the Alexa uh, platform than the Google platform for voice commuting. Um, that's on the smart speakers. On the flip side, um, you know, Google through their Android platform are on more smartphones, uh, so that um, and so that uh, users can engage by voice uh, through their smartphones. And then obviously Apple has the iPhone and Siri uh, enabled on it. Um, so I don't have the exact numbers for you, um, but there are different ways to engage. Um, by voice um, through you know one's personal phone through a computer and obviously through these smart speakers. What I like about the smart speakers um, is the uh, far field um, microphones, uh, so that you can be on the other side of the room and you know just say what you want uh, and get what you want. Um, you don't have to tap anything or or go to a specific app or anything like that. Okay, yeah, that that is good. Um, and then within Valera. What is the who's who's winning the war there between the three? I know you're yeah. agnostic, you support whatever platform the hotel wants, but just give us a little bit of visibility of who's doing the best so far with your yeah, so, technology. Yeah, so the first thing to note is um, the large software is enabling about 98% of hotels with uh, voice based assistance today. Um, so, Valar's, you know, if, if you're encountering one of these devices. Um, in, in a hotel room, it's highly likely uh, that the Lara software is in the background. Um, will the, they know the that? Will they, there, will they know that? It won't say. No. It, it, okay, got it. Mo most, of, most of the time, the guests won't know, um, uh, but they'll just know that they get what they want when they want it. Um, and, uh, you know, our software is uh, sort of an intermediate product in the, in the back. Um, now, um, in terms of, you know, market share today, uh, the great majority are, are using the Alexa platform um, and the Amazon Echo or Echo Dot, um, in large part because Amazon uh, was the first to the market. Um, we've been deploying these in hotels now for about three years. 
Um, and Amazon's also built some unique technology that allows us to um, manage the devices in ways that others haven't. Um, now, uh, the other platforms are catching up quickly, and um, you know, and again, our our vision is is that every hotel brand is going to want to have a consistent voice based experience across their entire brand for their guests, um, but they might want to let their you know uh, hotel owners, the franchise uh, owners in different markets, select the hardware and natural language processing that's most suitable for their particular hotel. So the experience will be the same but the platform on which it's built might be slightly different. Got it. Excellent. Well, David, I appreciate your time giving us some insight into Valera and Absolutely. so that people who are going to be out there uh, picking hotels, now you'll know when you make a prayer to God, it's going to be answered. And that concludes this episode of the Wander Learn podcast, where we explore travel technology and transformation. If you'd like to see the show notes with links to what we talked about, or if you'd like to comment on the show, or if you'd like to ask me a question, then go to wanderlearn.com and click on the latest episode. If you'd like to connect with me, just remember F Tapon. That's my first initial and my last name. F Tapon is the username I use on all social media. You can also get to my website by going to ftapon.com. Here's one last reason to remember F Tapon. If you like what I do and want to get rewarded for supporting my projects, then go to patreon.com slash, yep, you guessed it, ftapon. That's where you can pick up some sweet rewards for as little as $1 a month. And remember, subscribing to the WanderLearn podcast helps, but downloading each episode helps even more. Please share the podcast, review it, and sign up for my newsletter at wanderlearn.com. This show was edited by Rejoice Tapon. The music was composed by Eric Stratman. This is Francis Tapon, encouraging you to wander and learn.